The wilderness can be an enchanting place, but nature's captivating beauty oftentimes make us forget her dark and unforgiving side. Hunters and those who spend the most time in the natural world have first-handedly witnessed this. There are secrets left unrevealed, mysteries left unsolved, and knowledge we have yet to comprehend. But each year, more people naively venture off into the wild and fall victim to supernatural occurrences, accidents, and the raw power that makes nature so revered. So whether you're on your way out to the stand, on a hike, or gathered around the campfire, here are five stories to remind you of the events that can unfold. In September 2022, two of my buddies and I made plans to hunt antelope out near the Red Desert in Wyoming. About two months before the trip, one of my buddies dropped out due to family reasons, and a month later, my other for financial, so it ended up being just me. I was bummed, but still pretty excited as this has been on my bucket list for a while. Plus, I had just bought a new rifle for the occasion prior to, and wasn't about to let it collect dust. I'll spare the details, but cutting to the meat of the story, I didn't do much my first day due to travel difficulties cutting into my time, but the second day, I was up bright and early, ready to go. The day went smoothly, and I saw plenty of antelope, but not quite the shooter I was looking for. Closer to the evening, nearing the last bit of legal shooting hours, a decent shooter came into my range. I was debating with myself for a moment if I should take him or not. Even if I lost a day, I still had one more, but then again, you understand. I said, oh, what the hell, and took the shot. He was good enough, and I would have been kicking myself later if I didn't. The animal dropped on impact, so no tracking. With the last bit of light fading, I hurried to it after about 15 minutes so I could tag and begin field dressing the animal. As I'm walking out, about 150 yards to the antelope, I look up, and at least two miles off into the distance, I see this extremely bright light zooming over the landscape and heading my way. I thought it was probably a game board and coming to check my paperwork and all. No big deal. But there were no tail lights. Come to think of it, I don't recall hearing an engine if it was a warden or any motorized vehicle. I also hadn't seen anyone else out here all day, probably due to it being the middle of the week. This is Wyoming, after all. There are more antelope than there are people. I keep walking out and find the animal, then look up again. This light dives down into the sagebrush, and I can no longer see it. It was about a half a mile from me when it disappeared. I'm mostly confused at this point, not sure what the light is or where it went, but I continue on and tag the antelope. It takes me 10 to 15 seconds to put the tag on. Then I look up and see the light traveling away from me. It's now a good distance away and going at least 100 miles an hour. It was zooming way faster than any vehicle could travel over that type of terrain. Also, there are no roads or anything where the light is traveling, but the creepiest part was how smooth it was going across the terrain and at that speed. If it was a vehicle, surely it would have been bobbing along with the bumps and grooves of the ground, but this was in a near straight line, almost gliding. For it to be going like that and making no sound, I was pretty spooked at this point. Needless to say, the field dressing job was sloppy, but I didn't care. I just wanted to get the hell out of the area just as fast as whatever I just saw. When I got back to my truck, I checked the time and only about 45 minutes had passed between when I shot the animal, saw the light, and got back, but it felt like forever. Funny how real time works. I thought I wasn't moving fast enough. All night, I picked apart the possibilities, even called my buddies to tell them about it. They clowned me and made light of the situation for obvious reasons. I got a little sleep and still went out the next day, but this time made sure not to stay out close to dark. I didn't get anything, 
but also didn't want to encounter that light again or anything worse. Y'all stay vigilant and safe out there. My story isn't supernatural or about ghosts or anything, but I could have been turned into one if I had been three minutes later. I was still hunting through an area. If you don't know what that is, it's basically slowly and quietly walking through the woods, stopping every couple of steps to check your surroundings. Well, the woods is just full of surprises, and I'm going along until I hear a loud crackling behind me. I immediately turn to see a giant tree collapsing to the forest floor, but what made it scary is that it had fallen where I was just standing about three minutes prior. That could have been it for me. None of the trees I was near showed much signs of collapsing like leaning or anything, or at least I didn't notice. Guess my best advice is to be on guard for anything. Even the trees want to take you out out here. One season, a few weeks before opening day, I was setting up my hang-on tree stand on some property I luckily got permission to hunt. I was by myself, and I have a way of hanging it without help that's worked for me many times in the past. I had my harness and lineman belt on and had been up and down the tree a couple of times before what comes next. I was nearly done hanging the heavy stand, just needed to wrap some extra straps around the base so I headed back down the tree to get them. I secure my bridge with a locking carabiner that I have to unlatch then throw back around the tree when ascending. I usually make sure it's locked every time I reattach it to the loop, but for whatever reason, this time was different. I get all the way to the top, about 20 feet, and lean back into my harness, then snap. I felt my body go back further than it should. You know that whole slow motion thing that happens in movies as something tragic is happening? It's real. It seemed the action was happening seconds before my mind could process it, but once it did, I instinctively lunged forward and hugged the tree tightly with my lineman belt now dangling beside me. I really don't know how long I hugged that tree. All I remember is constantly thanking God for what didn't happen. I may be a young and healthy person, but there's no telling how that would have changed if I wasn't quick to react in those few crucial seconds. If the fall didn't kill me, what lay below probably would have. On the ground were these sharp trunks of smaller trees that had been cleared some time earlier. There wasn't a death trap of them, but there were enough. Some I even tripped over a couple of times, forgetting they were there as they were hidden under the leaves. After getting over the shock, I sucked it up and resumed what I was doing until finished. I seriously don't know what went wrong and where, as I remembered everything was fine up until then. I even leaned back a few times. I know this story isn't about ghosts and Bigfoot, but sometimes the scariest things are the life-altering accidents that are most likely to happen. But hey, the worst didn't happen, and I thank my guardian angel for that. I'm a pretty fearless female hunter, but this one nearly got me. I have people I hunt with, but I mostly hunt alone. I was after Whitetail in the early season, and this was my first time hunting this public land spot. Didn't see anything, but in the near distance heard a deer alarm call that caused me to jump out of my skin. I hate hearing it, but I knew they couldn't have been blowing at me. Yeah, I sweated on the way in, and with the getting closer to the evening, the thermals are dropping, but I was at least 20 feet up in a climber and the wind was to my face 
blowing my scent in the opposite direction. I ruled out I was the possible cause. Maybe another hunter was busted or some other predator. Nothing else happened the rest of the sit, but I like to wait until it's good and dark to leave the stand. So I'm walking out with my red light on my head when I hear a little scurry next to me on the ground. I look over. It's just a little armadillo. Okay, no big deal. I think nothing of it, but switch the light on my head from red to bright white so I can better see. I hit the access trail and halfway through, look to my left to see a pair of eyes bobbing towards me. For a moment, I thought it was another armadillo, but realized it was a little too tall. As it stepped into full view, I was surprised to see a deer fawn. Of course, no spots for this time of year, but it was looking timid. It moved so close to me that if not for the equipment in my hands, I could reach out and pet him. It looked at me, but I'm not sure if it really registered what I was or just didn't care. It wasn't concerned with me at all, but instead looked back to the direction in which it came, and I glanced up to see two separate pair of eyes glowing from my light. I didn't see their bodies fully, but just from the way the eyes moved, I could tell they were two coyotes probably in hot pursuit of the fawn standing in front of me. That explains it. The poor thing was more afraid of them than me. I'm not afraid of coyotes, but I have heard of what a pack of three or more is capable of, even to a human. For this reason, I keep a sidearm for attacking animals. Even if they were after the fawn, it standing near me puts me at risk of the same fate, so I would have legal rights. Luckily, these two weren't bold, and they retreated back into the darkness. I don't know how good my aim is in the dark, but if it had come to that, then at least the noise would have hopefully deterred them. The fawn finally fully noticed me and timidly walked across the path in the opposite direction. Then I started to walk again and it ran full speed. It was a cool, close encounter, and me just being there possibly saved this little guy's life, or at least earned him a couple more hours on Earth. Nature is nature. But I was driving down the road leaving a different spot close by a few days afterwards, and a doe was crossing with a fawn. I like to think it was the same little guy, but of course... I will never really know. Living in a rural area in Oklahoma, you could probably assume nothing much ever happens here. You would be right, but every now and then, things get crazy and this is by far the scariest thing I've experienced in my 43 years of being here. I'm in my mid-60s. Kids are grown and doing big things in the world. I retired a little before my wife passed several years ago, so now it's just me and a stray cat that hangs around my house from time to time, and a few neighbors spaced out here and there. To pass the time I have left on this earth, some days I like to go fishing at a spot I used to take my youngest daughter. It's still a pretty decent spot to fish, even if it's been discovered over the years. I wasn't too keen on going out that day, but needed to get out of the house and clear my mind. Being in my situation sounds peaceful, but it can get dull and lonely, so I throw my gear in the truck and head off. Picked up a few beers and snacks when I stopped for ice and bait to prepare for a day in nature. This spot isn't far from a local state park, so every now and then a person or two would venture out, take a few pictures by the water, create small talk, and be on their way. Hours passed, beer's gone, caught a few sandwich-sized fish. That was it for me. I packed up to head back to the house. Now the road I travel to get to the spot isn't all that busy and gets pitch black at night. The kind that without headlights, you can't see three feet in front of your face. If you look out the rear window, you definitely can't see past the taillights. So I'm driving along like usual, going slow in case a deer or other woodland creatures pop out, 
When on the passenger side of the car, I see movement in the tree line from the corner of my eye. I didn't think much of it for a split second, thinking it was just an animal getting spooked and running away from the road. Then, I realized, as I passed, the figure was getting on the road. I caught a faint glimpse of a person in my taillight's glow. They stumbled towards me and screamed, Stop. I did out of shock, but a part of me wanted to floor it, not sure what to expect, but I kept calm. I carried a sidearm, so I felt a bit more confident in the decision, but as an extra precaution, I locked my doors as the person came stumbling towards my car. They reached the passenger side door, and I could see it was a woman. Her face, bloodied and battered as if she had been in a major brawl. Crying frantically, she asked if she could get in my car, all while looking over her shoulder back into the dark woods. Without second thought, I unlocked my doors and she got in and told me to drive far away from here. I was trying to ask her questions, but she pleaded with me to just drive. I did, but not before glancing back at the spot that she came. I could have sworn I saw a light in the woods, walking in the other direction, but that didn't matter. My adrenaline was pumping as I glanced between her and the road. Blood mixed with saliva dripped down her mouth and stained the white shirt she was wearing. Her jaw looked to be swollen. Again, I tried asking her questions, like her name or what happened. This time, she answered them to the best of her abilities due to her injury. Note that by this time, I'm also on the phone with 911 to let them know of the situation. Let me just say that I had better service back in my day. Since the dispatcher wouldn't send an officer to my location, she at least suggested to take the woman to a hospital, but I was left to figure out which one. To put it short, her boyfriend planned a picnic date in the woods for the two of them, but somewhere during that time, they had an argument and it resulted in this. She only fought long and hard enough to get away and luckily stumbled onto the road at the moment I drove by. At the care center, I stuck around to explain the situation to the staff on hand, and they said they'd take it from there. They have a duty to report domestic discrepancies, so the police will be getting involved either way. That whole incident left me feeling shaken and angry, and no doubt, the light in the woods I saw was the boyfriend in hot pursuit of her before she stopped me. I never got a follow-up, but I really hope she left that idiot. But the sad reality is, she probably would just go right back to him. I know this may be a horrible thing to say, and forgive me if it's too much, but if it had been one of my two daughters, his body wouldn't have left them woods that night. See